All right, what you guys just saw right there was a video I made for a client of mine for the Apple App Store. The video hasn't been approved yet, so I added my own logo in a couple places, but today's tutorial is gonna be step-by-step -step how to make something like that. No, it's not. I'm not gonna show you guys step-by-step. -step. That would take forever. But I'm gonna show you guys little parts of how I made that video. And if you wanna just download the project file so you can play around with it, the link to that is in the description below. Let's get started. One, two, three, listen. So this is what we're gonna be creating today. It looks a little bit different than the example I showed you guys in the beginning. I just added a couple more elements just to make it look a little more dynamic. When you download the project file, you're gonna get this iPhone vector, which I found online, and then I just added this green to it so that way it makes it easy to key out. And I'm also gonna give you this wooden background here, which I found online for free as well. And then I took a couple screenshots straight from my iPhone of my YouTube channel and I'm gonna give those to you guys too so you can play with them, but of course, you're gonna to wanna to replace them with your own screenshots, obviously. All right, so we're gonna create a new composition, and we're gonna make this 1080p, 2997, 10 seconds is good. The first thing I'm gonna do is add in my wooden background. Now, if you guys don't wanna do this, you don't have to. If you wanna just keep it white, you can. Just skip this step. But for, for this purpose, I'm going to add the wooden texture just because I think it looks cool with the phone on the desk. And if you hit the quote key on your keyboard, you can make this appear and disappear. This is your title safe, which I use all the time. So I know exactly where the center of my comp is because I'm gonna drag this wooden texture over and I'm gonna put it right in the middle. And then I'm gonna duplicate this layer by hitting Command D on the Mac, hit P for position, and I'm gonna move this all the way over. And I'm gonna scale it in the negative. So I'm gonna hit negative 91. I'm gonna move it over until that line disappears. So that looks good right there. Now I'm gonna drag my iPhone onto the screen and then I'm gonna go to effect, keying, key light, and I'm just gonna pick this color. It's probably, yep, it's gonna disappear, perfect. And then the key to this thing is instead of taking these screenshots and dragging them on here and scaling them down and all this, so the best thing to do is to take one of these screenshots that I took off of my iPhone and throw it into a new comp. So now the comp that we created is the exact same size as the iPhone screen. So I'm gonna move over three seconds on the timeline. I'm just hitting shift page down to go over 10 frames each time. So now we're at three seconds and I'm gonna slide this guy off the screen. I'm gonna hit a position keyframe. Let's go about 20 frames by hitting shift page down twice. Move this thing off the screen. And I'm gonna add the easy ease. Shortcut key for that is F9. And then we are going to add the next screen here, right on top. If I wanna to go to the beginning of this later layer, I can hit I and then hit P. Shift page down twice. Go back to the previous keyframe and slide this thing off the screen because this is actually exactly how the iPhone behaves when you're inside of an app. These screens kind of slide on like this. So we want this one to come in a little bit sooner. Just like that, perfect. It's pretty much exactly how the iPhone behaves. We're gonna hit B, B on the keyboard and then N to, to set our preview. And we're gonna hit zero on the numeric keypad and see how this looks. That looks pretty good. And then we're gonna add one more screen. So we're gonna move down three more seconds. All right. And then we're gonna throw in our third screen right here. Position, 20 frames in. And slide this guy off the screen. Add our easy ease on both of these. We can just copy these keyframes. So hit Command C on the Mac and then paste them right here. So that way it's gonna behave exactly the same. And that is it for the screens. Now we're gonna go back to our main comp. Let's rename this, call this main. And then 
we're gonna throw this screen comp right on here. And if we scale it down, I'll put this underneath. If we scale it down to about 33, that should be good. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit just to see my edges. And we can scale this up at small increments. If you hold down the command key and hit the up arrow key, you can make it bigger and smaller. But it looks like exactly 33 is where we wanna be. So if we go back to our example here, you can see that the iPhone starts scaled up and then it scales down and then it slides over. So let's go ahead and make that first. I'm gonna create a new null object. So go to layer new null and everything from here on out is going to follow this null object. So I'm gonna hide it so you can't see it. So basically, anytime we move this null thing around, it moves all the layers around. Actually, one thing we wanna to do too to make this look a little bit more realistic is I'm gonna duplicate this layer and make a shadow so the iPhone will have a shadow on the table. So we're gonna to go to Effect Generate Fill, make this black, and I'm gonna solo this layer so we can see what we're doing. And then I'm gonna to go to Effect Blur, Gaussian Blur, and ramp up this Gaussian Blur. And then I'm gonna hit T on the keyboard and make the opacity about 50. And then I'm gonna move this layer over just a little bit so we can kind of see that shadow start to appear. That looks pretty good. So still, all these layers are following the null object. So when I move this thing around, everything moves around. It's looking good. All right, so now we're gonna go hit P and S for position and scale, set a keyframe, hit shift page down three times, and we're going to set another keyframe. So our movement's gonna take one second. Oh, you know what, one thing I just noticed is that the shadow is on top of the screen. You don't want that. So you wanna put the screen layer in between the two. There you go. All right, so we're gonna hit F9 for easy ease. And this thing's gonna scale up from about here. And we're gonna make it pause for about 10 frames. Set a keyframe. And then we're gonna move over 20 frames and slide it to the left. And then I'm gonna create some text. Let's see what we had in our example here. Subscribe to this channel now. All right, I'm gonna draw a text box right about there. Type in subscribe to this channel now. And we can make this a little bit bigger if we want. And I'm going to change the paragraph to left align. Can probably uh, adjust the leading a little bit. Maybe make it a tiny bit bigger. So as soon as the phone lands right there, this text is gonna come out from behind. So we're gonna set a keyframe, move over 10 frames, 20 frames, sorry go back and then slide this guy all the way to the left. So the trick here is to make it look like it's coming from out behind the phone. But right now we can see it underneath so we can fix that real quick. So we're gonna create a new solid and we're gonna put the solid over here to the left. And the solid is gonna follow the null object. And then we're gonna do an alpha mat on this. It's actually gonna be alpha inverted. So that way it's gonna use this solid as a mask. We're gonna call this mask. So that way when it slides out, it comes from behind it. All right, looking good. And then one other thing I wanna do too is I wanna add a little bit of flare. You can see in our example that you have this line that cruises through, the red and the white line. I think it looks kinda nice. Adds a little bit of personality to it. So we'll go to Command Y on the Mac and we're gonna pick this YouTube color here. We're gonna hit Q for our mask, which is the same thing as going here. We're gonna do a rectangle tool. And we'll just draw a mask right there. 
and then hit position. We'll make this take about, we'll say one second. So shift page down three times, slide it off the screen, and we're gonna have it pass through, but we want it to be under the iPhone, so we'll put it down there. So this is what it looks like right now. And then we're gonna duplicate that layer and change it to white, because we wanna have a white one as well. And then if you offset these two, you can see the white one's gonna trail behind the red one. And I'm gonna change the opacity of this to like 75. And I'm gonna put it underneath. There we go. So let's see what that looks like. I'm gonna hit B and N. Now, like the example, we're gonna create this box that goes around the text there. That's super easy to do. So go to layer, new shape layer. And we're gonna to wanna to use our rounded rectangle tool. Set our stroke to six and we don't wanna fill. If your fill's on, just hit option and click on this until you have the line through it. So we want the stroke set to white and we're just gonna drag a box right around it. Just like that. And then we're gonna to go to add trim paths and we're gonna start it at 100. Set a keyframe, shift page down twice, make it zero. And then we also wanna affect the, the end value. So we're gonna set a keyframe here, shift page down twice. So what's gonna happen is the line's gonna draw on and then it's gonna draw off. And we'll set an easy ease on these as well. See what this looks like. Looks good. And the other thing that I like to do is look, if I zoom in on this right here, you can see this line is kind of, it's a hard edge. If you go in here into the rectangle settings and go to stroke, where it says line cap right here, you can ch change this to round cap. So now it has a rounded cap. So when it animates through, it just looks a little bit more stylized. Looks kind of nice. Not that anyone's, not a whole lot of people are gonna notice that, but I think it looks good. And if you want to affect how something lands, the keyframe, looks like this text lands a little harsh. Go to keyframe velocity, and you can change this to a different number. Like, I'll try 75, and we can see the difference. Lands a little bit more smooth. And let's say I want my screen, my screen on my phone here, I want it to change right when this text comes out. So what I would do is, you can slip this, you can slip edit this layer over a little bit. So if we go to the end here and we just cut off a little bit of this layer, we should be able to slip this edit over. So if we hit Y on the keyboard, you're gonna get this tool that pops up. You can kind of slip this edit over a little bit so you can change when this thing animates in. That's the beauty of creating a comp for your screen separately. So now right when this text starts to come out, the screen's gonna change. Looks pretty cool. All right, as soon as that box is done animating in, actually we're gonna call this box. I'm gonna change this shape layer to say box, box one. Now we're gonna slide the phone over to the right hand side of the screen. So we're gonna hit P on the keyboard, set a keyframe, and we'll move over 20 frames. Slide this over, and as you can see, that text is getting buried behind the phone because that mask is still under there, which is awesome, that's what we want. And now we're gonna have another text shoot out from behind. So we just duplicate this layer here and move it up top so we can see what we're doing. Hit U to reveal the keyframes. And all we have to do is change this first keyframe so that it starts over here. I'm gonna move this underneath everything actually. There we go. And it's gonna land, I'm hitting K to go to the next keyframe. It's gonna land right here. And then what do we want this to say? Let's go look at our example. It will change your life forever. All right, so we'll change this to, it will change your life forever. We might have to adjust the box just a little bit so we can see the whole text. Cool. And then we're gonna wanna set the paragraph to write a line. 
There we go. I'm gonna move this over just a hair. So it's gonna start from behind the iPhone again. So we're gonna to wanna to create a new mask. So just create a new solid, slide it over, and set this to an alpha mat. Alpha mat inverted. And we want this solid to also follow the null. So if anything moves, it's gonna follow it. We'll call this mask two. So now when this text slides out, it comes out from behind. Same thing as before, we're gonna create a box. So we're gonna duplicate this box by hitting Command D on the Mac. And we are going to slide it over right on top. Looks like we're gonna to need to change the size of the box. So instead of using scale, which is gonna distort it, you're gonna to wanna to go into the rectangle path and scale it up from here. There you go, perfect. So it looks like as soon as that text is about to land, the box starts to draw on, looks good. And then one last thing we wanna do is we wanna create this flare thing again that we did right here, this red line, we wanna create that again. So what I'm gonna do to shortcut that is I'm gonna shift click these two layers. I'm gonna hit shift command C on the Mac and that's gonna pre-compose it. So we'll call this flare. So now if I duplicate this layer and move it to where we want it to be, so we want it to pop up right here, we want it to pop up again, but we're gonna scale it. We're gonna negative scale it so it comes from the other side. So as soon as it comes, it's gonna come from the left this time. So it almost looks like it's moving the iPhone for us. So that line comes in, looks awesome. All right, and then the very last thing that I would do is render this out or dynamic link it into Premiere, throw in my music and my sound effects, and that would be it. I would love to give you guys the music and the sound effects for this app video, but unfortunately I can't because those songs are copyrighted. But you can of course find some awesome music and stuff online. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Make sure to get your free download. Please subscribe, please like this video, and please share it on Facebook or some other social media that you like to use. That would help me out a ton. Have a good day. See you guys next time.